ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه به ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا اما بعد فان احسن الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وان شر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار ابو سليمان الدارني said in a statement he said whoever obeys Allah during the day Allah will reward him at night and whosoever obeys Allah at night Allah would reward him at daytime what that means brothers and sisters good deeds have a certain behavior if a person does something that Allah prescribed for him to do Allah would reward him for that thing that he had done another opportunity to do another thing to be rewarded with so one hasana creates the gateway for a second one one hasana leads and guides you to another one to perform as our scholar had said if you want to enjoy the pleasure of praying to head to that night make sure your behavior during the day is as what Allah Almighty commanded for you to behave and if you want to enjoy your prayer and salat in the masjid do the hasana of coming early to the masjid because one hasana will open the gate for another pleasure of hasana that your prayer in the masjid is different than barging into the masjid and praying that prayer the fuck immediately as way of Muhammad said if you see a person doing good deeds let that be known it is of a chain reaction of something good that he did for that and that good deed has offsprings that leads him to one after the other and if you see a person disobeying Allah then know that disobedience was created of a prior disobedience that led for him to disobey Allah in that chain reaction he said let that be known one hasana guides you to her sister to the second hasana and one sayyah guides you to another sayyah the imam ibn al-qayyim gave a descriptive example of that phenomenon or that sense he said i will give you an example when you take a seed and you plant it it becomes a tree that tree grows and fruits grow on that tree and when you eat that fruit you take the seed from that fruit and you plant it again and then that seed will grow into another tree that other tree will grow fruits 
and you will eat and enjoy that food and take the seeds from that food and then put it in the land and it will grow again into another tree where you will enjoy that food and another tree and another tree and another tree. And he said, Imam Nabayim, the same principle applies for those who disobey Allah, who commit sins. One leads to another. And then he said, be careful. Be careful because the reward of Hasan is a reward for you to do another one. And the punishment of Sayyidah is that you do another disobedience of Allah Almighty. And then the Imam Ibn gives a descriptive, unique analysis of what the situation happens if you perform in that matter. He said, as you do one hasana and it leads to another hasana, one good deed that leads to another, all of a sudden you see the blessings coming close to you in your life. And then you will reach a unique situation. It becomes a habit of doing one after the other, after the other, after the other. It becomes like a chain reaction. It becomes like the breath that you take. The same way you breathe air, you start breathing hasanat. You have to do it because you have to do it, that you cannot stop doing it and you keep on doing it. And he said, and if you stop doing it, you would feel you are choking, that you cannot breathe anymore. Because it became as a habit in you to perform as the commands of Allah told you to do, to do good again and again and again. So if you, for example, one day you stopped, all of a sudden you would feel depressed, you would feel as if the whole earth is on your chest, you cannot breathe. And that's once you go back to perform hasanah, all of a sudden you start feeling better and better and better because it became a habit embedded in you and your feelings. El Imam al said, the support you get in that performance is based on the strength of your faith. The stronger your faith is, the more support from the angels you will get in doing the good deeds one after another and opportunities open one after the other. The weaker your faith, the weaker the support you will get from the angels and so forth. Al Imam Ibn al Qayyim also said, the more you try to be, you perfect your worship, the more support from Allah Almighty comes to you. As Allah sees you trying to perform the worship matter the best possible way that you can do. Abu Ubaid ibn Jarrah, the companion of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, as he was dying on his deathbed, he said to those people around him, he gave a short speech. Part of it is the following. He said, don't let this dunya, this life deceive you. If you were to live 1,000 years, soon you will die. And definitely you will die. Like me, as you can see me on my deathbed. Allah Almighty has commanded that all the human beings will die. And they will die. The person who is the most clever among these are the ones who obey Allah Almighty and who act active towards obeying Allah Almighty, that they take charge of their lives in obeying Allah Almighty. He continued to say, the biggest loser is the person who disobeys Allah and he commits sins and he does not make after the sin something else to cover up for his mistakes until he dies, continuously doing sins without taking proper action to correct his path. And he said in a description of Abayd al-Jarrah, he said, 
how many people you see them in your life. They take care of their garment and the clothes that they wear. That has that becomes spotless without any dirt or anything. Yet deep inside them, in their faith, it is full of dirty spots. He said, immediately tackle all of the sins that you had. The old sins that you have in your records with new hasanat, with new good deeds. If one of you made sins from this earth to the heavens, and then he makes a hasana at the end, that good deed itself will raise upon all of his sins, and it will destroy all the sins, and it will prevail. And the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, that supports the teachings of what you see in the companion of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and the scholars that I mentioned before, and follow an evil deed with a good one to wipe it out. That is what the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and that is what Allah Almighty said in Surah Hud, verse 114, Good deeds do away with misdeeds. That is a reminder for those who remember. Imam al Hassan al Basri said into a statement He said, Target your sins, your old sins that are in your record, with new good deeds. There is nothing better to remove old sins than fresh, good hasanat and obedience of Allah Almighty. And that is stated in the book of Allah, Inna al-hasanati yuzhibna al-sayyi'at. Good deeds do away with misdeeds. Aqulu ma tasma'u wa astaghfirullah wa rahum fa astaghfiru inna huwa al-khawr. My dear brothers and sisters, four parameters that I will mention to you, and it is me first, and you should put them in our mind. These parameters that I'm going to mention, once you have you yourself, seriously yourself, when you question yourself and have the answer to them, it will awaken by will of Allah. It will awaken your sense and it will guide you towards the righteous path and it will initiate the sense of that you want to perform every day, every minute, every second something that pleases Allah Almighty. The first one is are you ready to meet Allah any moment? Are you ready to meet Allah? Are you ready to die at this moment? Are you prepared to die at this moment or not? This is an answer only you can answer. The second thing, would you rather the angel of death comes to take your soul while you are wearing the haram on your way to Mecca to perform Hajj al Would you rather the angel of death will come to take your soul while you are in your salat performing sujood. Would you rather the angel of death come to take your soul while you are obeying Allah in one manner or another? Would you rather the angel of death come to take your soul while you are reading Quran? Would you rather the angel of death come to take your soul while you say the Shahada? At that point, I have, I personally tell you, I personally, it's me, now, three of my friends have died during the two years. One of them died on Friday. He made a and he was wearing this clothes and, you know, dressed up 
just to relax a little bit to go to the masjid for Salat al Jum'ah. And he died prepared going to the Salat al Jum'ah. The second person who died a month ago, Second person, I discovered when he died, he died while he was praying before the institute. The third person who died two years ago, these people I know them personally. Uh, the brothers were planning to go to visit Medina, and their plan was to perform Salat al Fajr in the masjid and go in the car together. That night, as I learned from his brother, he was packing his bags, putting all his clothes to go to visit the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he was ready to go to bed in order to wake up for Salat al-Fajr and then on his way to visit the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He had a heart attack and he died on his way to visit the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The third point, where do you want to die? Because the place that you will die in, it will be your witness on the Day of Judgment. Would you die in a masjid? Would you die on your way, like the brother I know, he wanted to go to Medina or to Mecca and he died? Would you like to die as you are among good Muslims in a place like this where everybody around you is now? This is a question for you to answer. The fourth point is the day of death. Which day would you like to die? Wouldn't you like to die on Friday? And as the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad said, whoever Muslim dies on Friday, he will be spared from the torment of the grave. Wouldn't you rather die at the blessed hour of Friday, the last one hour before Mother God? All the prayers are accepted. It's a perfect hour to die in, which is Sa'ad al Jabba. These aspects and these four points, you and I have to visualize, understand, and prepare the answer for the direction that you and I wish to take. Because it is gateway to your path towards Allah Almighty after your death. I ask Allah Almighty what I've said is for us right, and against us, and not against us. And I ask Allah Almighty to bless us in this hour that we meet Allah in the best form and shape possible in the Allah Ta'ala. And I ask Allah Almighty for us all of us and Muslims worldwide to be in heaven as we meet Him on earth, that we meet in heaven altogether, Allah Almighty, inshaAllah. Allahumma fil mu'mineen wa al-munat, al-muslimin wa al-muslimat, al-ahyari bin umma al-amwat, innaka sami'u mujibu mujibu da'wat. Allahumma fil lana ma qaddamna wa ma akhrabna wa ma nasarna wa ma a'lanna. اللهم أصلح لنا ديننا الذي هو عصمة أمرنا واصلح لنا دنيانا التي فيها معاشنا واصلح لنا أخرتنا التي إليها معادنا واجعل الحياة زيادة لنا في كل خير واجعل الموت راحة لنا من كل شر اللهم نسألك الهدى والتقى والعفاف والغنى اللهم أنت نفوسنا تقواها وزكيها تخير من زكاها أنت وليها مولاها عباد الله إن الله يضرب العدل والإحسان ويتاء القربة وينعى الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظهم لعلكم تذكرون وأقيموا الصلاة